having basi somewhat too queasy Adimola Lukman Zaidu Sanusi Adi Remi Balugu Leon Yes, uh, the Nigerian team will be in Ghana, Kumasi, uh, very soon. We are playing for the qualifier of the World Cup. We are calling on all our brothers and sisters in Ghana, my followers, my supporters, you know, in the thousands, to troop to Kumasi, support our team and make sure we get to the World Cup because that's the ultimate place to play real football. And Nigeria needs to get back in the international space in a very positive and progressive way. Um, and we also invite people. I'll be here on on Tuesday next week to watch this match, and I'm going to transmit to our team the positive vibe they need to qualify finally, so that we can go and rest and prepare for the World Cup. So please do come to Abuja, and if you're in Ghana, please go to Kumasi. You know, uh, this is particularly disturbing and sad. I would say depressing. But here's the way I look at it. This set of footballers that I went to meet, Bola Tinubu, were the guys that had the best chance in 1994 and blew it. So it tells something about their sense of judgment since 1994. And my own position was that, look, why would you let hunger drive you to go and do such and commit such an egregious crime against young people in the country? We are all waiting for these guys to be retired into oblivion. And you carry yourselves. I use the word carry. And you went to Tinubu's house to endorse him to come and, you know, be president over a population that is 70 percent, 70 percent of young people who are aspiring for progress, people who want to bail out of the self-imposed hardship and poverty, unemployment, you know, the schools are closed. And these are the characters that are responsible for it. I think they should apologize immediately to Nigerians, if they're young Nigerians, because they were the ones who gave us the hope as far back as the 90s that you know it would be our turn imagine if in 2022 we had to go to the world cup with that set of players are we expecting to win definitely not so if we are not going to the world cup with a team led by okocha in 2022 why would okocha and the rest want us to go into the, the world with a team led by tinumbu who is probably in his 80s it's a shame and I'll say it once again, they need to apologize to all of us for doing what they did. So, most people don't know uh, that um, I'm a sportsman. Yes. Yes. I come to this stadium almost every other day to run with young people. Uh, also, just let me shock you today, I've done eight marathons, including the New York Marathon, the Lagos Marathon. Uh, the Miami Marathon twice, the Philadelphia Marathon, and one other marathon. And I've done a lot of short races, you know, 5Ks, 10Ks. So you're talking to someone who is very familiar with sports. And part of what we must do is to turn our little constituencies, our schools, bring sports back to those places. Because sports is not just entertainment, it's a source of revenue. Yeah. Massive amount of revenue. There was a time I went to Brazil. And I went to the places they call favelas. These are the ghettos of Brazil. But I was surprised to find out every favela you went to, even though they are shooting over their heads, they have pitch everywhere where young people are allowed to train. 
They have coaches, they have local referees. There's an investment in sports. Sports is something that should be invested in at the, at the grassroots level. You know, at the moment you invest in sports in those areas, you are likely to have the best swimmers from the Niger Delta region, the fastest runners from the northern parts of the country, including Bono State, where there are Boko Haram members today. You're likely to have some of the best footballers, as we know now, from the southeastern part of the country, the southwest, and the middle belts, where the likes of Michael Obi came from. You know, uh, sadly, the likes of uh, JJ Okocha, one of some of our best players, you know, the likes of Mutu, Adekoju, and some of these shameless guys that I went to see Tinubu on that day. So, that investment is what we are going for first and foremost. That is to say, we are marrying sports also with education. Yeah. Uh, everybody from pre-K, that's pre-kindergarten, we are introducing you to sports. By the time you are 10 years old, we want to know whether you can play football or you can run or you can swim. Because one thing I was told when I started running marathon was that if I had started at the age of 10, I would probably be winning laurels. Imagine a Kenya that brings in a million dollars into Kenya. You know, just one person who's won a marathon. And sometimes they win, you know, more than four or five marathons in a year. The same thing with Ethiopians, Ugandans. And we got 200 million people here who are just wasting it. Where you are wondering why they're doing Yahoo. You're wondering why they're cultists. Because they have nothing else to do. Young people always want to be engaged with something positive. If you don't provide it for them, they'll provide it for themselves. And you may not like it. And as we always say, uh, if you don't send children to school, entertain them very well, make them participate in sports and every other talent development that they should, they should be exposed to, you are going to have to uh, spend money on them if they go to prison. True. Yeah. You know, this is a game with plenty of historical context, but Nigeria Ghana games are not just ordinary games. They are the kind of games that you put in the same category as England, Scotland, England, Germany, Argentina, Brazil, or even, I mean, you might even say Man City, Man United, um, Rangers, Celtic. Those are the kind of, that, that's where you put this game. So in Africa, this is got to one of the biggest international, well, not one of the biggest, this is actually the biggest international derby in Africa. And that's why you look at, the way it's going on now, we have other teams playing, but nobody's talking about that. Even Egypt, Senegal, that's supposed to be like, oh, money, Salah. Nobody cares. What people care about is Nigeria, Ghana, because that is where the action is. And, you know, some of us are still scarred from the time that we played them in Brentford, and they beat us 4-1. I've, I've still not forgotten that game. And I was just telling somebody, one of the team officials here, that if he wants to look for trouble, when he's passing by, he should just say Brentford. And then he... <laughs> <laughs> and then watch, watch, watch how they will transfer him immediately to a different part of the national team or the NFL. But yeah, there's no friendly between Nigeria and Ghana. That game was a friendly at Brentford and they hammered us 4-1, you know. So now there's so much at stake. This is like the highest stakes game possible. There's 12 million dollars on the table. There's prestige on the table. There's World Cup quality on the table. There's careers on the line, you know. There's even the two federations are under pressure because whoever doesn't go to the World Cup will come at home and face pressure of maybe not getting back in office. So there's just so much riding on these two games that you can't take it for granted, you know, and, and that's why I look at this game and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, you know, this is going to be a remarkable um, encounter. And the funny thing is, almost every time Ghana have beaten us, Nigeria have been the favourites. And once again, you look at our team, you look at their team, we are the favourites. We are the informed team. At AFCON, we won three games. They lost to Comoros. Comoros! Comoros! How are Ghana going to leave that down, lose to Comoros? And they went out in the first round. Nigeria got to the knockout stage. Even the game we lost against Tunisia, we all played them for the better part of that game, even with 10 men. So, from a form point of view, the Super Eagles looked the, 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 the stronger team. From, you know, the, should I say, the current, um, yeah, current form, it looked better. But, like I said, whenever we've always been the favorites going into the game, that's when Ghana tend to win. But I like the looks of this team. No, correct me. I don't like the looks. I love the looks of this team. I love what I saw at the Afghan. I love the fight. I love the energy. I love the pressing. You know, I loved just their full, full-blooded, 100% commitment to the cost. And I'll tell you what, this Ghana team is not as strong as some of the other Ghana teams. And they're missing Didier Yuhu's one of the most inspirational Black Stars players and captains ever. 
we are missing Wilfred and Didi for me the major loss. But man for man, I still think the Super Eagles, this Super Eagles team are a much superior team to this Black Stars team. And if they can show that they can play the way they played in Egypt, with commitment, go for every ball, win everything, don't let those guys play, they win this game over two legs. Uh, yes, um, uh, we have a very wonderful team. Uh, basically, I've, I've seen several national teams. And uh, I've, I've watched and followed different generations of our national very Super Eagles of Nigeria. But believe me, um, today's crop of players, aside being highly disciplined, uh, highly gifted. I remember when we were in Cameroon, which was in the Address the boys, and I knew it wasn't flattering them. He said, You guys, you know about my first set, right? They said, Yes, we heard about them, we watched some of them clips. And I said, You know, people keep saying they're the best set, right? They said, Yes, I said, but no, the Bible said that, I said, but I'm not flattering you. This assemblage, this group of players we have right now, are better. The only difference is you need to win something. Yeah, that was what he told the players. We need to win something, win something, play at the World Cup, and then they'll compare you to that set of '94. I know it could be better. So wonderful guys, great team. One thing going for them is the mental toughness. See, I've never found a crop of players that are in sync mentally like that. The way they reason, the way A talks, is the way B will talk. If you ask them about the game against Ghana, remember what Leon said. Leon said. Uh, I don't want to talk about rivalry. I just want to talk about the game. You understand? Uh, like Kelechi said, I don't. I won't listen to the noise in the market. I want to buy something. You understand? So the noise in the market will not distract me. So when you hear things like that, and they said it in two different forms, they keep saying with rivalry. And I remember Kelechi said something. He said, well, somebody just interviewed me now for FIFA and said, do you know I even played against Ghana at under 17 level? And if we scored against them, we beat them six. So I said, oh, really? Can you say yes? So it means these guys are mentally change, strong. Change, change, strong. Technically gifted. They easily interpret whatever the coach wants them to do. If there's anything they, that is going for them, they want the mental toughness, the, the ability to interpret tactics, and they are very, very intelligent. If they, if you keep this intelligence and take it to the classroom, these guys will be geniuses in the classroom, coming out with A's and nothing less than A. So just give it to them. We hope uh, we'll go to Ghana and wipe out Ghana and uh, beat Ghana. Bravo! Well done! I well done! Before the game against the Benin Republic during the qualifiers for the well Afghan. And they said they had not lost at that particular stadium in 13 years. Uh, we went there, you know, we, we even went there by, by sea. <laughs> we went there by sea. Some people said we appeared like Vikings. <laughs> we were pirates. We went there. And the way we even stormed the place, and uh, when they played our game, and that was the end of it for Benin Republic. And uh, same fate will befall Ghana. It's unfortunate that Ghana will have to wait in 2026. Um, how I wish uh, it was possible for a team and a half to attend the World Cup, because it's a historic World Cup in Qatar. It's the first time the Middle East will host the World Cup. And it's unfortunate that five African countries will go. And Ghana and Nigeria, in this case, will have to fight for one ticket. If only one country were to go to Ghana, uh, were to go to Qatar, it has to be Nigeria. I'm telling you how it means more to us than it means to Ghana. So Ghana, please, you have to wait. 2026, when it's an expanded format, you will get a spot and join Nigeria as well as usual. But I know we are on the way to Ghana and to Qatar, and we want to get to Qatar and then show that yes, we have wonderful couple of years. So, Qatar 2022, here we come. We are the Super Eagles. Unlucky! Sweet boy, Mustang. Hey, Mustang. Who's 
Strike, look more, louder. Well, um, you know, left on the time, uh, FIFA made the decision to make uh, the playoff, the final decider for the World Cup, which has not happened for quite some time. We expect that it's going to be very, very difficult, it's going to be very tough. And now we have a very big uh, rivalry with Ghana and we are playing them. So, right from time, whether Nigeria has a bad team, or Ghana has a bad team, in terms of countries are playing, it's always, always competitive game and very, very tough. Uh, but so you can see how the game have uh, taken over the whole uh, Nigeria. Everybody's talking about it. In Ghana, it's the same people talking about it it's because Nigeria are Ghana. So, but I think we'll, we'll have an edge because even in our club competitions, it's the same thing. If our club are playing Ghana clubs, it's always like that. But, but I believe we'll have an edge. Uh, we have more Ghanaian players in the NPFL than Nigerian players playing the Ghana League, which shows that there is some difference somewhere. So I think um, almost every team in the NPFL have a Ghanaian player. In Ghana, I don't think of any Nigerian top Nigerian player playing the Ghana, Ghana League. So that can give us an edge to show that on the, on the football level now, we are maybe in the higher trajectory. And so, uh, my end of, um, we are starting now, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna take the day. Thank you very much.